Welcome to another Disney Infinity tutorial. Now we're jumping straight into the gameplay here. This is what we're going to show you over the next five clips. That's right, you've got five clips coming and four are going to be released on the same day. Okay, so all these four should be available to start with. But what you're seeing here is we're collecting, for this level we have to collect some parts. And once you've collected the right number, it unlocks the cannons. Also you'll see an opposing ship and we have to shoot those targets on the opposing ship. Now this game is designed as a two player game so basically there is, should be somebody on the other side shooting back at my targets but you'll have to collect three parts it unlocks your cannons and then you have to shoot the targets. Right Now there are three rounds and once you've shot all the targets on a round we will do a broadside attack. Now just in case we have some of you geeks out there that want to just to prove me wrong broadside is the side of a ship but in 1590s it was con it was uh, commonly used as the fire from the side of a ship uh, and broadside just for the extra fact is also known as the measurement but this here is my broadside attack and as you'll see we've shot the targets and it now fires a bombardment straight across onto the other ship and that blows up there on the other side once that round is done I win that round we now move to the next round so the ship south to uh, its next point and when that ship gets to that point it's going to unlock the tools that we need to rearm uh, the cannons so you'll see the uh, ship slides around and I'm going to show you all these particular stages so you'll see here there's no points no targets on the ship at all we've here and look you'll see the points now triggers appear on the side so we now go and collect all these so it's a race to see who can get there first once all three are collected now as you look here, as we get the last one, look at the ship in the background, there are no targets on it, see there's no targets on it, but as soon as I collect it, the targets now become available, so you can see them there, now I can jump down, and we can start firing away. So that is the plan, that is what we got covered on these next uh, four clips. The final clip, which is clip five, is that once you've won your round, the opposing ship will sink and we'll sink in a ball of fire. Now I haven't worked out how to do that and I've just finally cracked how I'm going to do that as I was constructing these videos but that will be the very last one when we'll show the whole lot all together and we'll show you it in two player mode as well. Now the art of this game is um, I've done it on those four levels you can simplify this down by just doing it on two levels and I'll repeat this as we go through our uh, development but I'm going to show you every single part uh, of how to put this together. Now I think it'll take you about a week to do roughly about two hours a day to do it and we'll now move around, oh, there's the other bombardment goes across and you can use these bombardments in other things, you can use them as catapults but we'll hit the ship again there we go, excellent, and we start moving and we're now on to the next round so that's what we've got planned, now some people have complained before that my clips are too complicated now I can tell you for a fact all the stages in this are very simple but let me just tell you, this, as you can see, is as big as the map gets, and we have used the memory to the max. Yeah, so I am going to test your creativity skills to the maximum here, because you, I have to say, try to make it as simple as possible, and I have to say, it's probably the most trickiest toy box I've made to date. Yeah, so take your time. You can all do it. Don't be scared off. Okay, there is a lot of connecting. Uh, and as my thing that I keep preaching throughout the entire of all my my, uh, my little uh, clips that I show is that plan and layout, right? Where we lay out all our logic and we organize it in a manageable fashion, you'll know where those steps are. But there's a lot to put together here, so you need to keep a track of it. The map itself is quite small, but there is a heck of a lot of logic that we're going to be doing. Okay, and I've made things more complicated because I wanted to have it um, in like four segments. But in life would be a lot easier if we just kept it to uh, two. So you could start off with the ship stationary; they don't even have to move, or you can then look at expanding this particular level. But I have to say, as a two-player game, this is really, really good. And I say, I'm one of the really pleased with the way that this has turned out. Didn't think it was going to work, and trying to get it to pick out certain items. Now. What I'm going to concentrate in this video is the actual ship movement. So the bombardment bit where we get the flying catapult, that happens in the next clip. But this one is actually structuring the ships so they are perfectly matched. 
So you'll see here that one's not going to get to the place before the other. They have to be timed perfectly. So I've made sure that the path tool is identical for player two and for player one. And as you'll see here, we've now gone all the way around. This is the, uh, the full section. And also they can fire bombardment to you, by the way. So they've got to go either way. And now we're going to click the other part. Yeah, so this clip is going to concentrate on how we make the ships sail around in a circle and how we get them to stop and start. The uh, next clip is going to show you how to do the catapults and then clips three and four are going to show you how to do the logic to get the targets and these tools to appear throughout the level. Now, I don't I normally ask, but I definitely would like you to, um, if you do like to see what you like, please uh, tick the box. It means it basically gets more noticed on YouTube and also hopefully more developers will see these clips being created and that someone will either make a, a new version of Disney Infinity or a different game using similar design tools because there still isn't a game like this. And I still get a couple of people saying well, that you're still playing this game? What is what is this game? And if you don't understand how the toy boxes works. Those that follow me, you do understand it, and you understand the power of this game. But this is one powerful game. Uh, although it gives you the impression it's designed for five-year-olds, <laughs> it's so much more complicated than that. Now, while I'm um, publishing these uh, clips, we should, between now and the final clip, find everything that's been released in E3. So, fingers crossed, we're going to hear some news on some some cool games. I've just seen the new. Uh, Battlefront 2, that does look good, so uh, we'll keep it a close look on that. Right, so that's what the plan is. So we're going to start off, and I'm just going to end it up here now, on building this from scratch and showing you all the elements to it. So you can do it, don't give up. Let's all give it a quick, good, good go, and uh, best of luck, guys. So hope you follow the instructions uh, and hope you like it. Okay, uh, let's start and start it all anew. So I'm starting from my master template, so I've opened this up and I've saved it and directly above it I've created this circular pattern. Now if you'll notice here, we're using the uh, basic shapes, I've used five shapes in a line and obviously you'll see there's the third one I've got coloured in green just to highlight it for us. But basically using these basic shapes I've put five of these in, in one particular group. Yeah. And what I've then also done, I've used the triangular shapes based on the end one. You'll see lined up on the end. And it then goes two, two, so two of those, sorry, sorry, three of those in fact. One, two, three. So you see three of them. Then we have the little triangles and we have three little triangles. So three long triangles, then three tiny little triangles. Yeah. And then you'll see I've done them on the end and you get that slant curve. So I was trying to make sure I had a perfect shape going all the way around. And then I line that up on the end of the, the the very first box, and again line up my five up, and then I can list it again going around the same place. And then I put a little triangle on the other side. But just to get you an idea, this was the shape that I made, which is to make sure that the part tool that I did was exactly the same. It had to mirror it identical. So these shapes afterwards I can delete off, but they're purely there to help me guide the ship. So it's quite easy to do, just basic shapes, and you'll see that I've done that over my master template. Now, if you haven't got the master templates, not a problem. Don't worry about it. Uh, so I haven't, in any of the clips, used any text tools here at all. I'm going to use all the description in the beginning of the save. On my final version for myself, I'll put, probably put some extra text in. Right, so what we're going to need to do is, once we've got our shape built, we're going to now need our uh, a path creator. Now, this is important. The path creator doesn't start on the middle of the box. You'll see here I'm going on the middle of the second one so in the middle that's where I want you to start. It has to be set back because what I want to do is I'm going to click points now on every single section. See look here's a little point on the half point there and I'm just clicking as I go through each little section on the screen and then I'm going to move it round from here so I'll go back to the middle of that point there and as you'll see I go round I now pick the corners this guarantees me to get the same pattern. Now in this one it was too steep, so I'm actually going to move it to the end of that triangle one. Okay, so click it through, and we're going to go all the way around this shape. And just to sort of copy this particular element, so this is the same. And the reason for these squares is so, like I say, you can line them up, and you can make sure that when we do the second path for the other ship, we uh, we can do those items. Now, in case I forget, the ships are taken from the uh, uh, takeover playset. 
So if you haven't got that, try and track one of those down. They're dirt cheap at the moment, uh, and you can get characters now for really, really... Uh, well, in the UK, the characters are so cheap, it's ridiculous. I think I bought a load for a pound a piece. So keep an eye out for those, because uh, they will slowly disappear once they've gone. And we'll just create this path. Now, as I go doing this and put this path around for you as you watch me do this, can someone explain to me, by the way, why Pirates of the Caribbean in the US is called uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales, which is a great title, yet in the UK we've got it as Salzar's Revenge, which is just pants. Uh, I preferred the American title, I have no idea why they changed it, it must be something to do with copyright, but why change a really good title? Really confused me. Uh, I haven't seen the film, uh, I have been told it's quite good. Uh, but that was one of the reasons why to do a pirate, pirate theme. Um, but let us know if everyone thinks it's any good. Um, but we'll see we go from there. Right, as you'll see, we're going round. You'll see me put the logic through, trying to get the path in. Making sure, by the way, in the middle of every middle strip, it has to have a point in the middle. Okay, have you noticed that? There must be a point in the middle of that strip. Okay, so I'm just moving it round. And that's important I do that, by the way. Right, here we go. We're coming back round, and there we can stop. So that path is now done. So if I go back into spark mode, I now change the uh, path to be looped. So I will do that in a moment. OK, so the path comes all the way round on all those little dots on the screen. And the ship is going to sail round in that particular arc moment. So it's a perfectly round shape. So we go down to this little path tool here. Oops, so I can see it. somewhere I still not got used to the uh, spark mode. Right, so we we'll click on the path on there and we we'll go to properties. And uh, I'm gonna keep the speed at 100. I'm quite happy with the speed. I'm gonna switch it so it's looped, so it now guarantees that it constantly goes around. But make sure your green point does not start in the middle, but we have dots all the way around. And each one of those middle dots I have a dot in. Now, if this is a starting point for one of our ships, yeah, so we have the little dot on this side, I have to have the same one on the opposite corner. So in this case, it's at a slight angle, so I need the other ship to start on the other side. Now, I can't have two paths on top of each other, so this is path is going to have to be slightly higher. So I'm just going to point the point on the side there, go across to the middle, and I'm just going to be just a, just a path point up. That's all I'm going to do, just a fraction higher, that's all I'm going to be. And what we're going to do now, you're just going to repeat the exact same process, and you're going to click that all the way round again, clicking on all dots on the on the one exactly the one above it, so it mirrors it all the way through. Now, so to speed up time and not to uh, bore you at all, I'm going to speed through time, but that is what I've gone through all the way round, and I've set the same thing as well. So there you go. We now have something I prepared earlier. We now have two routes going round all around the top, and I've set the option to be a looped as well on the other item, and I've also told it to be um, uh, just yeah, just to be looped. That's basically it, really. Right, great stuff. So now we've got that done. What we're going to do now is we are going to create the sea. And that's where we use our basic tiles here. Now I need it just to be a little bit higher because the boats are going to be sunk into the water. Yeah. Uh, so it can't be exactly right because I don't want them directly on the edge, I just want them to be a little bit low down. So you'll see here, I'm just checking the difference on the path. So it's going to be one above, there you go, just one slot above there, above that particular item. And I'm just going to now fill these items in, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click that tile in, and then I'm going to space that tile all the way across. Now, but before I do this, I'm going to set the colour of that tile. So if you go back to the tile and do triangle, you can change the theme of it. I'm going to change the theme of that to be water. If I can find it, I, 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 you'll see me shoot past it back and forth. I'm blind as a bat when I'm trying to look at this. Where is it? Come on. Okay, as we go through, there it is. I'm going to set that water. So I'm going to set that water, but I'm going to theme all, but press the square to set it. Yep. Now that means everything now gets turned to water, which is quite cool. And what I'm going to do now is going to reselect that tile and then I'm going to cover the entire circle with that tile. So I'm basically going to click onto it and now I'm going to click across and start filling in that area just by going from one tile to the next. Now that's going to take some time so with some clever video editing I'm just going to jump ahead that gun but I'm just going to say cover up the hole that we can see from that screen. So let's just speed forward this forward. 
And as you can see here, I've just jumped ahead now. I'm just going through and tiling all the way across that we completely cover that circle. Okay, so I've gone all the way around from the area. Now that's that threat is going to be the size of our map. Now we can make it bigger, but as you look down now, when we play the game, we're actually going to be quite low down. So it's going to look like the water goes on the horizon anyway. So it's going to give the impression it's quite good. But that is hidden directly underneath where we want it to appear. Now, now I've now I've got the map covered of the circle, and I know the ships aren't going to be in their way. We're going to build a little island at the side because we need the island to be our starting point in our game. We need our players to pick on the challenge marker. Now, I'm not going to show you how to build an island. It's just some terrain up, but the island needs to be quite high up. Yeah, so using some of my hidden objects and fancy items, be careful of that. I wanted it high so that you couldn't just climb back onto the boat okay so you'll see here we're going to jump ahead again now and I've just put an island on which is just you just sticking some shapes together so here you go I wanted the island hide that was important and all I did is just a couple of square box with a nice little edges to make it look not square and then I use those fantasy objects to put the trees in yeah uh, and then I put one of the little mountains in and I think I set it to a uh, treasure island box but you'll notice I've put it at the edge of the ship now looking at this and playing around with it, I may want to move the island further back. But what I need to do now is now fill the water underneath this island all the way around and go across and expand on this. So again, we'll speed up through our editing because this is just a bit that's straightforward. This is not complicated at all. And you can all do this in your sleep because it's just putting tiles together. And you'll see now the water's even bigger and it covers the island in as well. And I'm starting to finish the whole area off and we should be done. So now we've got the back which is even larger with our island which is going to be our focal point and there's our circle under this particular section. This is the bit where the boats are going to appear. Now before we put the boats on we are going to have to create some logic gates to turn the gates, the, the, the boats to stop and start as we go through the list. Now remember like we've done with the Death Star lift basically it's just a uh, an object moving around and we're going to stop and start it so we have our position where we're going to put our logic gates and we're going to put a level in here where all our logic gates appear so if we go to our creativity toys alright see that's the cell ship we're going to use that's on the um, toy box but I do need some logic gates Now as I started here, and I'll put these on later, I started putting the logic gates on and what I should have done really when I first started this is not put my logic gates on. What I should have done was I should have created a platform underneath of where I wanted to position them. I, I will be putting the platforms on a bit later but I should have put those there. So I'm just going to create a logic gate here on the left hand side and that left hand side is to represent the logic that actually starts the path because obviously the path that the ship is going to stop and start throughout the lot. Uh, this uh, logic gate, the second one, is going to be used for turning the path off. So it's going to, the other one starts it, the other one turns it off. And then again, if you've watched any of my other clips, you see me do a double, double whammy on both of them. So I'm just trying to line this up with the other path. So this is the reason why I've gone quite close to the wire, just so you can see me line it up, and then I'm going to move it down. But I, what I should have done, like I said, use them to terrain below it. I'm trying to find the green dot. Where's the dot? Can't find the green dot. That's because I got a little bit confused. It's not that side. There's my green dot. Must be by the side of the green dot. You realise I've got off totally at a tangent there. So it's very easy to get lost. Yeah, it's very easy to get confused to where you're going. So that's the one that's going to turn everything off, and that's the one that's going to turn the actual item off. But as you'll see, we can't actually see where those logic gates are, so I should have done a landscape there. Anyway, let's take the first one. And we're going to say, right, when we do an output a signal to this logic gate, let's click onto the little green dot. Yeah. And what we're going to say, when I click onto there, I would like you to switch you on. So that turns on the ship and it will start moving across on the screen. And the ship will now start sailing through. Yeah. Now what I need to do is pick the middle one, which is the middle one, and I want the middle dot. So on this case, you'll see I'm doing the bottom line. So when we reach that dot, new logic connection, when point reached on path, can we go to the second gate? Yeah. Can we go to that second gate and can we input a signal into there? Now that signal, when we chuck that out, that is going to say, can we turn the path off? So new logic connection, 
on output can we turn the path off so we now need to go back to the green dot and switch that off if I can get a mouse come on trying to get there oh. finally there and I'm going to go can we turn that off so when the logic comes back can we turn that path off now that's where it goes on to the bottom part of the path and on the part, second path all the way around we're going to have to send a signal to that logic gate so on the bottom path when the ship gets around to this side yeah and it's going to be in the middle so I'm looking at my boxes I've got that's one, one two it's the third one and it's the one in the middle this is why it was important to place these dots when we get to that point new logic connection when point reach all I have to do now is just point it to the one on the right yeah so point it to there and what I can do there is what can you go in there can you input a signal that will send it up and that will turn the path off so the ship will stop I have to do the same for the middle one on this one again make sure that we are and keep focused on what you're doing we are doing the bottom path at the moment yeah it totally messes it up if you get select the wrong path so keep your track of what you're doing okay and we go down now what I tend to do is I tend to have the TV on or something in the background while we're practicing this not a good idea I've made many a clangers on this one uh, so you want to try and make sure you're focused on what you're doing don't be distracted because you can end up by clicking the wrong item and the whole thing falls over right so let's pick the bottom row in the middle where new path connection point reached so we have now got a point for every single path on that particular one so that one turns it on and this one says where it reached those first points on the output can you switch that off that one switches it on that one switches it off now I now need to do the same to the exact same opposite side but on this time what we're going to do is so this one is going to do the one above it so new logic connection on output can we turn the path back on so the boats will start moving on to, as they go through so can we switch that on now the other logic gate is now going to have to do it this is for the top line so we're doing this all the way around for the top line so again on the list click onto each one to make sure it's the middle so it's not that one there no well it is that one there sorry what I was saying there was I'm saying when point reached on path can we import that logic gate so so what I was doing there on the gate I said right on output can you switch that off and now we say when I when we then get to the point we input it and it will switch the item off so sorry on the green one I was connected it up because I was saying on output okay a little bit sidetracked there right again middle again top row when point reached on path so we reached not that one the one above it here we go and then we move this back input it to the second gate and we have to do it the four times now like I said if you want to make it nice and easy for you don't have to do it four times you can still have the circle but just have two points so it's either either side or you don't even have to have the boats move yeah I want it to be like a sea battle uh, you'll find this funny though that when I first tried to do the sea battle I had four or five boats and it just killed the memory it just absolutely killed it uh, and it was just way too much so I thought okay I'll bring it down to three bow it got down it could I could only do it with two but saying that it still works and it gives me a lot of leeway um, but yeah it was far too much we're doing now once also once I've got all the text that I want to use it from my template I will then delete the other text boxes out so we'll get rid of those all, all when I'm finished with those to try and free up some more memory so again I'm going around on each of the points the opposite way around on the other side and I'm making sure that I on each of those points I'm firing into that logic gate which is all good so we now have our turn on our path and we have our turn off path that's a lot easier to do before you are having a ship on there but we've now got that connected I've got them on either side of the area so what we're going to do is we're going to have to now do a boat and put the boat on there in our side so what we're going to do is go to our tools now 
for our tools what we're going to have is we're going to create some temporary toys here to be able to test the thing actual works yeah so we need to trigger it off how do we get to check the boats move so we are going to need some buttons okay this first button is going to act as a switch on and off yeah so we're going to need a button here uh, we are going to need another button a bit later on uh, and we're going to do a couple of series of those but this first button here is just so we can test it so when we press that button we need to input a signal into that logic gate yeah can we input there and can we say input it and that will then turn that on but at the same time that's only the bottom row doing we need to do the same for the other side so on this button here new logic connection when pressed can we set the other one on now be wary this buttons are going to be deleted yeah the logic is not that's going to stay but the buttons are going to get removed off of the screen they're purely there for us to test as we go along in the stages yeah and we're going to test it under each of these particular stages so we now have that button pressed when we press them we're all ready to move along and I go on the screen now I'm just going to bring up this tech counter because this is from my template. Now you may already start your screen, but I'm bringing this up the template. I'm just going to move this back onto my main map because this is when we load up. Now we will appear at the top of the screen here. So I'll move this up to the top. And like I said, I want to show you every element, everything that I did from my master one. So if you can copy it, and if you don't have the master template, don't worry. Just do it on a blank box. The master template was purely so I can add text. I'm not going to add any text into the clip I'm showing you, so it won't make any difference to you. It's just that my final version will have those little changes to it. So cool, we have the button now set up that controls the path that will start the boats and they will automatically stop when they get to each stage. So that's now set up. I'm going to need a couple of other buttons that I'm going to use and that's going to expand and these are purely for us to test and configure these. When we actually get to the end of the game and we finish it all, these buttons will be deleted off and not use it. But they're there to allow us to control and test what we're doing is correct. So they are essential for this particular game. So I'm going to put another button in. Uh, well three buttons in total, we'll come to that one in a moment, but the second button I've just done that's going to reset the path, that's going to pull all the objects back into play, so you know when we're testing and lining things up we're going to press that button and that will reset the path, so I need another logic gate here and we'll use this tool, and again this tool is purely for us to test it, and this one's got, this actual tool will be more needed when we get to start doing how the ship sinks because uh, I'm going to have to reconfigure when we attach uh, locators and effects. So what we do is, when we press the button, this button here, uh, when button pressed, can we insert a signal into this path? So we can go and input it. And what we're then going to do is, on output, can we reset the part of both those paths? So new logic connection, on output. What I'm going to do now is go to each of the green points on our section. If I can find the flipping things. There we go, there's the first one. Right. Click onto there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do reset and play. Brings them all back starting ground again when, when the game actually starts and loads up so we can test it. So same thing with this side of the logic gate. Now again I've got it floating in the air at the moment and I'm gonna move that under the water. I just want everyone to see what I was trying to do. So we'll move this and we'll put this wherever it is, there's the other green one. And we'll set that up. Okay, so that now has got that logic set. So when we press the button, anything connected will go back so we can test the ship going around all over the place. And that's all from that particular button. So press that and we can test. So we can use that as our test. This button here will uh, will then restart and press play on that particular screen. Right, so now that we've got that set up, what we're going to need to do now is we're going to have to basically um, go and bring the, the ships in. So I'm going to my toy box orient and I'm going to go to the uh, takeover one. Where is it? Come on. Toy box takeover and there's the ship. Now sadly we only have one colour. It'd be nice if they gave us a couple of different ships, the black pearl or something, but no they didn't. Now this is important by the way. You'll see that I'm just chucking it here in the box. This is what you should not do because the system remembers where you put the boat yeah now you'll see them at the side I would make sure they're definitely clear but every time you save the boat they'll refix it because the boats will get away and I'll show you this they'll become it has like a, a memory where the boat is going to be so try and make sure they're well away from the actual actual item that they are 
Now what we've done here is I've just clicked onto the first boat and I've said link to the path. And you'll see here it linked to the path and it started to move and then it suddenly stopped. Yeah. So I'm now going to click on the other boat. I'm going to go here, new toy box path. Just like I've done the other one and I'm going to link it to the other item. Yeah. And, to, and now we have both boats there connected together. So they are now set up and ready to go. Now what we can do is they're going to sail, sail around. But so there's a couple little settings we need to change here at this present moment. So let's go back to my island. Right. So if I press this button, they will start sailing again. So press on this one and away they go. You'll see here, but they are fixed. So once we have attached the ship to the path, we then have to change the properties of it. So while I've got the wand here, I'm going to go to the properties of the boat, go to the toy box path, and what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure the, ori the orient side is along the, lath, the path, and we're going to rotate it 90. That's got to be done on both, and that guarantees it will stick on the actual path of the ship. Okay. Now one of these ships is higher up than the other ship. So what I'm going to do here is if I hit my reset tool, um, I'm just going to wait on here. So let's grab that one there. I can still reach it. Let's go to properties. Go to our toy box path. Switch it so that is on and rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so we've got that 90. So we now got the boats all perfectly pointing in the right direction. So that's all good. Now, one of them, like I said, is higher than the other. So we've reset them. Go back. You'll see that player two is a little bit lower than player one. You can see just between the two, they are just a little bit lower. I'm just looking at the two, and I can see that player two's ship is a little bit lower. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to actually change the verticals. And I want to think I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to bring player one's boat further down. I think it's too high. Yep, so I'm actually going to bring that down because to match them up so they're in the same height. So even though the paths aren't level, I can now change the actual property setting on that object. You see, so I'm just checking, but you'll see here, before we change those, you'll see that I'm pressing the button, the boats are moving around and they're stopping. Yeah. And they keep each other, they should both stop together when facing each other, which is quite handy. Yeah, so again, just trying to line up, just double check I've got the path correct. So you'll see that start one there, I'm happy with that one. And I think that's too high, so I'm gonna bring the second the other one down. So let's highlight the one down there. So definitely going to bring it down by about two little notches. So let's go back to that one. Let's select it and go to properties. In that properties, we are going to go to the vertical side. I want to go down two. And two's about right. Okay, so set that option to two on the setting. As I come out of here, if I do sometimes that should change straight away. If it doesn't, you can press the reset and that should also fix it on the screen. So we've now got them bang on the same height and they now sell around and they'll start and stop, which is all quite good. So I'm quite pleased with that. That's looking good. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of that part, I'm going to move that and hide that out of the way, so I'm just going to bring that down into the water section, I'm going to leave this in the corner here, because this is what starts the gates on and off, so I'm just going to place this here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can't see where we're placing these logic gates. So what I'm just doing on my creativity toys, I'm just going to go to my terrain. I'm just going to get some flat little squares. Uh, and I mentioned I should have done this right at the very start. So I don't have massive ones, just need little small ones where I'm just going to put this one underneath my island. 
this is going to deal with all the things that start the level off in this corner here this one here is going to deal with the switches I'm just trying to line them some up and this one is going to deal with the on off buttons so not 100% correct and I'll move those into that box so I just pick those up but now that you'll see the train we can see them clearly now I should have done that right from the very start so I'm just going to chuck these on but we can see that this this logic is and we're going to bring logic down into this particular area and the logic that you can all see down there at the bottom that's just from the template and like I say you don't need the template it's not necessary it's purely there uh, if you want to add text to it if you've still if you're fortunate enough to have that or you create your own then you can pick that on your list but we can now see these boxes a lot clearer like I say that one turns it off that one stops at each point and this one which is over here I'm just going to move that now and that click onto that I'll stick that that does that like a little reset and sorts all those out so we've now got everything set up those logic gates will now trigger through so we've now got everything and we now have our boats going round in symmetry together now one thing you need to do also is constantly save as you're going along yeah keep saving the boats keep saving your level in case it crashes it does seem to be crashing a lot and as we build our logic up the logic is going to become quite slow and juddery so be careful on that but when you do something you're happy with save it because you tend to want to give in right that button there like I say it's going to start off the boat that's going to trigger it off and these are all going to be deleted that's our little reset tool we've got and the other button I haven't even mentioned about well, that's going to tr control the broadside attacks that's going to have all the explosions and as I say we'll expand on that on our next clip yeah but that's what those are particularly going to be and they're all logged, linked down here underneath the actual button option which is not too bad now when the actual game loads up the boats start on the tool and what we found is that when I saved it because we've now turned the path off they turn off permanently so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a game starter or a level starter it's called so if I use a level starter what I want to do is as soon as the level loads I want it to make sure it turns the path on yeah so as soon as that loads that will move the path because the system now has logged it the things turned off so on properties on level start can we start the particular path and there's another reason to set certain things up before you do it because you can't see the object it's there we're just going to get our cursor into it it's a little bit nice so sometimes it's easy to leave the boat as late as possible or add the boat on and then delete it back off afterwards so that's level starts to switch on because that's that little pause because it's back because we want it to when it starts it moves forward and it goes in again and we're going to take these off as the uh, when we get to the end of our fourth clip anyway but it's there purely for us while we save and load things up there we go on level starter right, and that's our first building blocks of this game we have now got our ship sailing in a attack formation against each other which is not too bad see that wasn't, wasn't too painful was it so we have done phase one we have our boat sailing round and every time we press that button they go through now we're going to obviously trigger that in the game uh, and when we've had the attack and the attacks gone off they're going to fire but our ships now sail round in symmetry as in against each other and also as you'll notice look that island is a little bit too close in it to this ship as it comes close so I may want to move it again as I, as I want to, to do now this clip that I'm showing you here this little bit on the end here is a little bit ahead of the game because it's just to remind you what we're going to do now in the second stage now the second clip what we're going to be concentrating on is we've got the ships is the actual bombardment yeah the uh, broadside attack okay uh, so as you'll see on the side I've just added a couple of little buttons I'll explain these emotes and this is purely just for you to remind you what's happening next yes yeah, so the ships all sail through which is looking really good but these were through but what I've created I've created the four buttons which will fire those bomb and explosives now the first thing I did this these bombardments that we're going to show you uh, you can use them uh, in any of them you can use them uh, as bombardments or you can use them as catapults because I was creating like a uh, Game of Thrones type um, uh, I don't know big big giant Lord of the Rings type battle so I wanted bombardments coming through so you can use the same logic here and so you'll probably see these re uh, reappear again 
but we've got these ships sailing around together and these are little four buttons that I've created and I say oh, we'll create those in our next clip but this is going to help us test us the buttons so what we do is that when we're ready we can then press the button and that will then fire our bombs across the screen now when it's within this distance we can't see the flames but there's flames with those and they'll blow, back, blow up on the boat and then we're going to send it another part where the other ship can send it back at the same time in case the other ship works. Well, that's our first clip. Um, so really quite easy, really, so far. So you can, you can carry on finishing this item off. Don't forget to like it and get ready for the next one. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.